Today we're going to be talking about my Pokemon investing strategy moving forward into 2025. There's some crazy sets coming out, like the Team Rocket set, one that I'm super excited for. And I'm going to tell you guys how I've changed my investing strategy, and you guys can learn from my mistakes, so hopefully uh, you guys can just skip that, that um, the growing pains of that. So just to start off, I just want to talk about a few things before we, uh, I'll give you guys some specific examples, but one of the main things that I started introducing more recently into my investing strategy is Pokemon Center ETBs. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't take these as seriously as I should have uh, it, during this era, because in the if you're not familiar, in the Scarlet and Violet era, not only do you get, <clears throat> excuse me, you get a stamped promo, a Pokemon Center stamped promo, and those are doing really well, specifically those with Gen 1 Pokemon. Um, they're, they're just, they're doing the best. Anyone that has a Gen 1 Pokemon, obviously like 151, you know, it's, it's its own crazy th thing and it's above everything else for the most part. But I, it's just something that I'm taking a lot more serious. So with every set, um, I'm integrating Pokemon Center ETBs. There's a lot that you can do with those. Um, there's grading plays that can happen, uh, because those stamped promos, um, you can rip some and you can grade. Uh, grade the stamped promos there's usually really good margins there especially with what we have right now with like the charmander and the snorlax um those stamped promos so there's that you can just sit on them um other people in other countries or depending on where you live they can't buy these from the pokemon center so there's just resale value there um exclusivity because of the stamped it limits the the quantity so adding that especially um like Surging Sparks, if you guys are, like, the sets just coming out, these are still available on the Pokemon Center, so if you guys can get those, um, that's something that I would consider integrating more. Also, the other thing, the other thing that I kind of have, like, early on, it was, I'm, I'm talking, like, early on, right? It was one, one booster box, two booster boxes, um, which is totally fine, by the way, if you guys, if you only have the money to get one or two boxes, um, don't feel bad, or if you can't even get a box, and if you're only getting packs, like, you have to um, invest how you can and what you feel safe with. Um, what I'm going to talk about right now is kind of scalable, so you can, if you want to do it with just ETBs, if you want to do it with sleeved packs, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, booster boxes are still kind of the king, with Pokemon Center ETBs taking the second place, uh, in my approach, but, so earlier on, I had to, I, I had to rip, right? So I wanted to do, I tried to, I started off with one and one, right? One to rip and then one to sell. Then I kind of went up to three boxes, one to rip, one to sell more in the short term, like after some good gains uh, to hopefully kind of offset that cost of ripping that first box. And then one to hold like long term, uh, like five to 10 years. It was kind of the plan on those, still have those boxes. So that's good. Um, then I kind of started scaling up even more, right? And then it was um, like a case, a case to hold sealed and one box to open. Um, and then now it's cases, multiple, we're in, you know, multiple cases kind of now territory um, with the ETBs as well. So that's what I'm working towards and it's, you can scale that. So if you're, if you're crazy and you have to open a case, I would try to at least get one case to offset, possibly two, right? So you guys can see exactly where this is going. Um, just scale, scale it. Um, like if you're, if you have to do sleeve boosters, then do sleeve boosters. Um, those can do. We're gonna talk about that. Sleeve boosters can do well. We're gonna, I'm gonna talk about that kind of at the end of this video. Um, but yeah, I also for the most part, I cut out um, like sleeved boosters, some of the collection boxes, um, some of that stuff. Not that those, those can't do well, but I decided to focus on just mainly booster boxes and ETBs, uh, the tins, those can do, like everything can do well. It just depends on the set. It depends on your time, time frame. But, um, this is just where I've steered my focus. And I found that a lot of people did that as well. You're just buying tons of stuff just to have, right. To put it on the shelf. And then you, by the time you bought a bunch of tins or, uh, a bunch of other boxes you could have bought a booster box or a pokemon center etb or multiple so that's kind of how my strategy has adjusted i've just scaled it and now i'm honestly i'm opening less 
than I ever have compared to like getting cases, but only opening one loose box kind of, it's kind of been my approach just because the reason that led me to the investing side was I was just sick of getting burned, like sick of wasting money uh, opening. And just, I, I feel like I have horrible luck. I have had some great luck recently in the 151 openings and some in, in the past, but overall horrible. Anyway, so we're going to jump uh, over to some specific examples, kind of with the Scarlet and Violet era moving forward into 2025. Um, I've been talking about this a lot. So I, if you've if you heard me talk about this, I apologize, but we're going to jump into Twilight. Now, Twilight was the set that kind of changed things for me. Um, although, out the gate, pre-release prices were high. This came down to 101, and I think it was maybe a little after this time, actually. I was able to pick up some boxes with some TikTok coupon deals that actually got the prices down, I think, in the 80s, somewhere around there. Um so this box did drop down. It didn't go below 100. Um, I'm sure there was a few that were sold below 100, right? I'm not saying that there wasn't any below 100 sales, but the market average market price at this time was 100. So this box dipped, right? And not crazy. If you got Twilight in the $100 range and it's at almost 170 now, then you're doing really good. <laughs> so um, also, I don't have access to um, any distribution, right? So... Uh, I, I just don't have the, it's too hard to get approved. I know there's whole, some wholesale programs out there, um, but it's too hard to get it. You have to have a brick and mortar pretty much currently. And I just don't have access to that right now, uh, which is fine. So, and I'm assuming that most of you watching this video probably don't have distribution access as well. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's just how you can get boxes at wholesale essentially through a distributor. Um, usually you're getting them in like the $80 in like, I think it's mid to higher eighties is your cost. Um, anyways, so yeah, if you're getting boxes at a hundred kind of currently, because that's kind of what these sets have been doing, um, then that's a pretty decent entry point. Obviously you always want to get your lowest price to enter. Right. Um, but a lot of the times I think you can get lost in the battle for trying to get these at the lowest possible price. Okay. Also super random. This is just a side note. If you're seeing these booster boxes right now, on eBay for like 90 bucks. If they're shipped from China, they're fake, okay? There's been a lot of Twilight Masquerade boxes. They're just fake. If it's too good to be true, it's fake. Just throwing that out there, super random, but I've seen some people get burnt by that online recently. Um, so we're gonna use an example of Paradox Rift here for some other, this is kind of what my approach used to be. And Paradox Rift, while not the strongest set, I do really like the set and I do think that it's kind of a sleeper. I've talked about it before. Uh, it has a ton of IRs, and I think it's, anyways, it's not doing super good right now, but we'll talk about, on the one-year chart, you can see, like, even right here, this went into pretty much at cost for um, distribution, I mean, a little higher, right? Um, but this went sub-90, so this is what we used to see, and this is what I'm talking about, my change, um, part of my other change, is I pre-order now uh, at, like, I try to be below 100 when possible, I think I got some of my stellar uh it was definitely below um 100 and i think my surging was like right at 100 just so i'm giving you guys my prices this is what i'm paying per box right or yeah so like 600 per case my yeah stellar cases were below that but just a little we used to be able to and this is something also that you guys need to adjust i'm not saying that you do this forever right if it turns out that boxes drop over time and the, like the demand tapers off and you can get boxes for $89, $90, then I'll just, then I'll wait. But currently this, we haven't seen this with the last few sets. So, and it started kind of with Twilight. They haven't really dropped below hundred and surging. We're going to talk about that in a second, but yeah, I wish I could be getting boxes at this price right now. Um, so yeah, right now this is at 106 a box. Anyways, this is just my example of how they, they would usually come out high. Pre-release would be high. Um, and they would kind of taper down and then maybe after a few months, even they'd have a little dip, uh, people would be offloading. They'd be some, sometimes they'd be selling at a loss. Some companies would be selling at a loss after fees. Some people would be selling at cost because they need the money for the next set, right? Some of these, uh, companies are buying lots of boxes. Anyways, currently that time is behind us. So if we look at surging, and I've talked about this recently, right? 
surging is like like 135 140 a box i know this is tcg player you could probably find some cheaper elsewhere but we kind of try and use this as a gauge for the most part um but we'll zoom out right here a little bit so this is what happened it went from one 150 a few people bought and then it went to 115 was the lowest and now it's up to like 140 135 so that's what i'm talking about now this set is hyped up it's very hyped up right now um but that's why i kind of changed my my strategy if, if i'm gonna pay 100 a box it's fine right i was below the 150 under the 115 and so for sets moving forward this is going to be my strategy as well and then i'll just keep scaling i'll just as as i can when i have money because not everyone's made of money um not everyone's doing this full time right i'm not i'm not making a living off of this by any means um right i wish but um i will try to allocate more funds towards more sets moving forward and i will just keep scaling up my boxes my cases um including the the pokemon center etbs but this is what's happening right now now that's we're kind of entering like a crazy market some people have been saying we're going to go back to covid ish times they're saying like that's the hype that they're seeing around this set around the market in general so um we will see if that pans out it kind of seems like that might be happening so that's why you guys have to also if you think this surging sparks demand is crazy wait until the team rocket set comes out if they do it right even if they don't do it right but if they really do it right that's going to be next level so you guys think this is crazy just wait uh yeah so um anyways back to one point um these prices are a little bit higher now so like i said i try and be in around the hundred dollar mark if you're currently looking to enter I would be more looking for surging. If you're looking to enter and get some boxes for surging, I would way look for the Pokemon Center ETBs. These are selling right now 158, 159 on TCG Player. You can get these for $60 on the Pokemon Center if you're able to. They are still available as of this recording. 10 a.m. Pacific time, um, October 29th, they're still available. Um, they got the Magneton promo, should do really well. Gen 1 Pokemon, popular artist. Uh, great looking art so this box should do well uh, it, it's already selling on here i mean you you could sell immediately and make some money but for me i'm holding my pokemon center etbs for longer um then we're going to talk about we're going to i'm a little bit all over the place we're going to talk about specialty sets so also i try not to skip any sets i try to diversify with i get, get a little at least at least a little bit of every set that comes out now not everybody can do that some people uh, if you want to skip the specialty sets and only focus on the booster box sets it gives you more time in between to uh, save up some money so keep that in mind but um, something that I know 151 is 151 but something that I like I kind of really like is these booster bundle displays I started really coming onto those um, with 151 but I kind of, for specialty sets, I feel like, I know that these are more packs than a booster box, but I feel like long-term that these will do really well, like booster box-ish, kind of. And I know it's a higher price point, but I like the booster bundle displays um, for specialty sets. Um, but also, uh, and this is 151, so in, it's crazy right now, but uh, Pokemon Center ETBs for specialty sets, right? I, I would almost go way more pokemon center etbs than booster bundles for specialty sets um mix or mix and match but the common denominator that we've seen this era is when there's a gen 1 pokemon and the promo the stamp promo card it does really well that is what we've seen the other cards not doing as well not that they're not going to do well long term but that's been the consistency um then like so paldean fates is taking off right now i'll give you another example the bubble muse taking off it looks like the Charizard might take off. We'll see. Um, I would assume it would follow at least a little. And we're seeing a little bit of a run-up on the uh, booster bundle displays, up 12% in the past month. It's a pretty fun set to open. So once again, specialty set. Pokemon Center ETB booster bundle displays. That's kind of what I'm targeting. Um, then we'll talk about the expensive sets. Now, 
obviously, if you could have got these, uh, we'll use Evolving Skies as an example. If you could have got these back here for $9, if you could have got these back at release for three, three, four bucks, then you would have been doing better. But there is something to be said for, this is kind of, I, once again, I don't do a ton of this, but it's just something that does work when there's very expensive sets that do really well. And you can, like, we knew Evolving Skies for a while was going to be really good. Um, we had this big run-up on the sleeved boosters. When a set is very expensive, a lot of people want a piece of it. And when booster boxes are 800 plus, it kind of it kind of prices people out. Uh, the ETBs are expensive, but the sleeve boosters are ex are cheap, right? And single packs, I would, once again, I would lead in sleeve boosters personally. But um, those are sometimes easier to sell because they have a lower price point, right? And most anybody can afford a $20 sleeve booster. So um, while that's not something I do a ton, I do dabble with that a little, okay? So uh, obviously um, there's also sleeved uh, booster cases. Once again, I don't really, I don't really dabble with that. Um, but uh, that may, that is something that may adjust in the future moving forward. Once again, my my current strategy is is changing as things develop, right? We used to wait. I would wait, let sets come out, let them drop, get the boxes then. Um, I also wasn't really getting Pokemon Center ETBs. So now I'm getting more and I'm pre-ordering and that's pretty much my strategy. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I just kind of wanted to touch on that. So I'll try and update you guys as things change moving into 2025, but like I said, the Team Rocket set is the one I'm most excited for. We, we'll know a lot more once we start seeing more card reveals from some of these sets. The, we got the Eevee set. Um, that's going to be a specialty set, so uh, we'll see. But i um, excited for the mar where the market's at. Uh, a, little, a little concerned if things get super crazy and it's hard to get boxes. We'll see. I mean, I think we'll always be able to get boxes. It's just like at what price point. So anyways, the, the demand's getting there. This is how I've adjusted. Um, if you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, obviously you enjoyed the content and enough to watch the 17 minute video. So do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button. Um, leave me a comment, let me know what you guys think or how your strategy is different. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.